Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are from around the world. I'm delighted to show you the annual general meeting of the ISES platform. Now, theoretically, I usually do this at the end of the year where I give you all a transparent overview of where we are as an organization and our roadmap for the year to come. Unfortunately, my forecasting skills of when babies are about to pop up are not so great, but um, I think from a forecasting point of view in terms of the industry, it's quite on point. So I'm delighted to give you an overview of our plans and future perspectives. So moving on swiftly onto the next slide, and yeah, you know, this is pretty much the closest one can get to the, um, the basic version of the metaverse, right? Um, First, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to the partners, to the sponsors, and our members of the International Semiconductor Executive Summits, which oversees the platforms that you are aware of, such as the China International Semiconductor Executive Summit, the Taiwan International Semiconductor Executive Summit, the MEMS World Summit, as many of you know, that is hosted in China and, and Europe. But the goal for this year is expansion to the United States of America. And I will explain to you all in more detail in the next slides to come, our why, our mission, and of course, our entry into the power semiconductor market, which is not a new market for us, to be honest with you, um, but um, it deserves a spin-off event, and I will explain in due course. So, moving on to the next slide, what you see here is something quite interesting. Um, this is a, an outline of the actual divisions that we have at the ISES. Um, last year, for the first time, TISES went above CISES in terms of revenue. And this is revenue with regards to attendance, members, and sponsorship. Um, and then, of course, CISES came second, followed with the MEMS World Summit European event and the MEMS World Summit China, and then the webinar series. Now, on the next slide here, what you see is in terms of our global presence, just to give you an outline of you know, our areas of focus. So traditionally, as you can see here, is that the focus of our events has always been in Asia with an element of Europe. But you know, we've got a significant participation coming from the United States of America, which absolutely makes sense for the situation that we're in at the world at the moment to go to the US and host our platforms there for our executives um, who find significant value in our events. Now, I wanna emphasize again to our sponsors, uh, our members and our partners that, you know, I sincerely you know, thank you all for putting your trust in us, in helping you guys be successful. And also one needs to note as well, the incredible colleagues and advisory members around the world that we get to work with. Um, 2021 was a record breaking year for us in all areas and with an average of 50% growth in sponsorship and members. But for me, it's not element of the revenue. It's more so the operational excellence, which I'll explain in due course. Um, and that is defined under the NPS, which is the Net Promoter Score, of our summits um, of you know hitting above that 50 mark. Um, what one can note as well uh, in specific is that we've managed to get through some very tricky, tricky situations uh, successfully in 2021. Now, I'm ever so proud of what we've accomplished this year uh, in 2021. Um, and my colleagues and you know, working with the best advisory board members that one could have um, deserve a lot of credit for that. And when you look at an overview of what the ISCS is about, you know, our participation pretty much focuses on the vice president and the senior director element uh, from R&D, technology, manufacturing and operations. And the key topics and main interest uh, are, as you can see right here, um, however, I need to make it very clear that we will not be diverting our focuses heavily in the other areas per se, unless they deserve to be spun off as an event. Our successes come from the back end side of semiconductor manufacturing, 
And you know, this is with communicate or with discussions on advanced packaging or heterogeneous educate integration. Um, you know, this is always going to be our forte, and we are not going to sway from this side of things. However, we will have key areas of focuses and elements from the other areas. Um, other than Power Semiconductor, which deserves a spin-off event, and I'll explain to you all why, um, and the differentiator element. Um, one needs to take into consideration 5G IoT, market research, AI chip, you know, memory manufacturing, and CMOS image sensors. Um, you know, all of these areas have their own challenges, especially in the supply chain area, but, you know, also, one needs to take to acknowledgement you know, the challenges due to so-called trade wars between the Western and Asian countries. Now, I'd like to talk about you know, how are we supporting our members? Uh, and that's, of course, priority one is enhanced brand presence, uh, thought leadership, networking with leaders, gaining market share, and adapting to micro challenges. Now, the next element that we have as well is you know, how are we supporting our members? And our served markets are evidently accelerating, which makes life uh, quite easy uh, to an extent, okay? Um, when you look at the EV dominance, and this of course is in relation to power semiconductors, um, you know, what really stands out for me is not necessarily, of course, you know, Tesla being the number one uh, from a dominant point of view, but it's more so this area of EV charging. You know, 2018 was 4 billion, and they forecasted that it's going to hit 46 billion. And the fact that EVs could outsell gas cars by 2040 says a lot, which therefore means a lot of semiconductors are going to be used, right? And then You've got this element of you know BEV and PHEV, you know, total global sales, you know, in this area of new electro energy vehicles for the first three quarters of 2021, January to September, reached 4.2 million units, with BEVs in particular accounting from 2.92 million units. That's a 153% year-on-year growth. And this is, of course, according to TrendForce's latest investigations. And then I want to also talk about data. And here you can see the data titans. You know, today, around 5 billion internet users exist around the globe. And this annual infographic from BOMO captures just how much activity is going on in any given minute and the amount of data being generated by users, which of course has an impact on semiconductor manufacturing. Now, the reason why we are creating this Power Semiconductor Executive Summit, um, which I'll explain later on when it's due, when it's gonna be held, is because one, the industry needs it. Um, there isn't an executive level type of platform out there in the world, um, similar to what ISCS does. Uh, for the power semiconductor industry. And you can see it like in as little as five years, analysts at your development predict the already mighty RF GAN device market will mushroom from 900 million to 2.4 billion, as seen in figure one. So three decades of investment from defense organizations around the world has placed this high power density, high efficiency material firmly on the compound semiconductor map with GAN devices routinely used in military and radar and electronic warfare. So today the power of GAN is being harnessed by 5G infrastructure. Tried and tested GAN on silicon carbide technology is also widely used in 5G sub six gigahertz RRH base stations and expected to maintain its stronghold for some time. Now, when you're looking at WFE, and you know, ISCS is pretty much funded by the WFE community, um, what you see is that with the global electronic supply chain experiencing a chip shortage, the corresponding shortage of foundry capacities also led various foundries to raise their quotes, resulting in an over 20% year-on-year increase in the total annual revenues of the top 10 foundries for both 2020 and 2021. 
The top 10 foundries annual revenue for 2021 is expected to surpass $100 billion. And as TSMC, which is a very, very key partner of the ISES platform, leads yet another round of price hikes across the industry, annual foundry revenue for 2022 will likely reach $117.69 billion, which is a 13.3% year-on-year increase. So this should be an exciting year for our partners and for us as well. Um, now, the silicon shipments and, and, and global silicon wafer shipments are projected to register also a robust growth through to 2024, with wafer area increasing at 13.9%, okay, year over year in 2021, to a record high of nearly 14,000 million square of square inches, okay? The, Logic foundry and memory sectors are contributing to the 2021 silicon shipment expansion. And, you know, I think with growth momentum being tempered by the slowing pace of macroeconomic recovery and the timing of wafer manufacturing capacity ad additions needed to meet growing demands, you know, silicon wafers are still the fundamental building material of the majority of semiconductors. Um, and of course, these are vital components of all electronics, including computers, telecommunication products, and consumer devices. All right. Um, the next slide I want to emphasize is, of course, the DRAM trends. Now, DRAM prices soared 41% through the first eight months of 2021, rising from $3.37 in January to $4.77 in August. September's DRAM ASP slipped 3% to $4.62, which was still a 37% increase from the beginning of the year. So such a strong price increase and market rebound were expected in 2020, following a very difficult year in 2019, when the DRAM average selling price fell 44%. So, you know, uh, this should be another good year for the DRAM uh, industry as a whole. Now, the next slide is pretty much focused on the IC design RDM players, all right? Um, big gains in artificial intelligence, machine learning, 5G infrastructure provide strong boost to sales growth at AMD, MediaTek, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm. And what you can also see is that there's a strong 20% increase in semiconductor unit shipments, coupled with a 3% in the total semiconductor average selling price, which is driving this growth. So the next slide I wanna also show to you, which is like I mentioned at the earlier part of this presentation is the backend side of things or OSATs as one would say, um, is as the global vaccination rate ro rose, okay? And border restrictions in Europe and North America eased, social activities also you know, began to enter a period of recovery with the consumer electronics market consume, you know, seemingly ready for the arrival of the traditional peak season in the second half of 2021. And this is according to TrendForce's latest investigations. So at the same time, however, the global supply chain was affected by delays in maritime, transport, skyrocketing shipping costs, and component shortages, in addition to already prohibitive price hikes for certain components in the first half of 2021. So given the parallel rise in both material manufacturing costs, the market for end products has not undergone the expected cyclical upturn in the second half of 2021. Even so, the overall demand for and shipment of smartphones, notebooks, computers, and monitors experienced quarter and quarter increases in the third quarter of 2021, which thereby drives up the businesses for major OSATs you know, especially, I, I want to say special thank you to Amco, who is a key partner of the ISCS. And, you know, what you can see here for the third quarter of 2021, or the end of last year as well, is the revenues of the top 10 OSAC companies reached $8.89 billion. And that is a 31.6% year-on-year increase. Sensational. So, how does all of this macroeconomics apply to the ISCS organization. And I'm going to explain to you all the how, you know, what we're going to do to execute 
our 2022 strategies and what's next. Without a doubt, we have to hit the US market. We have to have some presence there, significant presence, because we have significant members based in that area who have had incredible experiences with the ISES platform. Um, so we've created the Power Semiconductor Executive Summit in the US, and we've created the Power Semiconductor Executive Summit in the EU. Um, and then we have the AI chip event, which will be held at the end of the year. And of course, as many of you have seen, the upcoming US ISS, which is an incredible agenda with incredible top leaders in the industry presenting at that event. Now, I emphasized earlier that our success was derived from operational excellence. And this was the NPS scores of our events last year. And the most amazing thing that you can see in terms of the results per se, in terms of net promoter score, is this uh, net promoter score uh, benchmark explained in terms of how or where we are uh, as an organization. Uh, the highest hitting NPS scores, of course, TISS, but even the lowest hitting NPS score for CISS was at around the 63 range. And above 50 is the business to business event is resulting to an extraordinary experience in every way. So I'm very, very proud of this, very, very happy and proud of this in terms of a, an operational point of view. It shows that there is significant loyalty uh, amongst our members and partners. Now, from a growth perspective, I mean, these are the actual figures uh, from uh, last year. And to go a bit more deeper in terms of the physical attendees, what one can see is that yeah, with regards to the MEMS EU event, we had an issue with the, the German government where they've capped our participants. And I expect that this year, with things looking different and hopefully touch wood better than last year, that number should be double uh, next year. I mean, this year in 2022. And CISES, again, you know, it was uh, uh, in, in the midst of a pandemic and there were lockdowns all over the city. So, uh, you know, I was quite happy with the results for CISES and, and the MEMS World Summit China. But you know, the, the greatest event that was hosted by us last year was the TISES event, which pretty much had every single top management executive from every major leading organization in Taiwan in presence. Now, the webinar is very interesting uh, in terms of the attendees that were in participation last year. And you can see that you know, the most popular events were pretty much advanced packaging, power semiconductors, and the AI chip, which makes sense why we are doing this spin-off element, because most of those attendees who participated in these events were predominantly from the US region. Okay. Um, so uh, these are very, very interesting figures for one to look at. And then the MEMS World Summit uh, webinar series, uh, you know, you can see that the market research and startups was the most popular out of the lot. But then, of course, you know, the Titans uh, was a, a very well attended. And the research partners, again, I feel it's quite unfair with that number in specific because it was held just, uh, bef just before the summer break. So, um, yeah, it's very, very, very interesting figures to see. Um, now, our key focus for this year is pretty much strengthening our geographic footprint in the US. And um, you know, with the great support that we have from our US partners, um, I trust and I am very, very confident uh, that these are gonna be very, very special events, uh, be it the ISS event in the US, uh, the AI chip in the US, and of course the power semiconductor uh, market in the US. Now, I wanna explain our vision. And I want to emphasize that we, I want to focus more on the value and the culture of the ISES platform. Yeah, we want to become the association of choice. And these are going to be focused on four specific areas, partner orientation. And I think this is a very, very important focus point in terms of respecting, understanding, and valuing the feedback that we get from every individual, which has evidently led to the success that we are at at the moment. And 
you know, to challenge and empower the, the status quo of the industry, uh, you know, to challenge and empower and empower individuals who, you know, deserve to be on stage, uh, giving opportunities to people in the industry that don't get enough opportunities, you know, and then of course this element of, you know, diversity, equity and inclusion uh, is another key area. Um, and the world is changing, you know, the world is changing and you know, the semiconductor industry in the next 10 years or 20 years, it's not going to look the same as it does this uh, in these years. Uh, and it's definitely changed since the last 10 years in the industry. And most importantly, of course, is trustful collaboration. You know, this is the, the key element, not only for us and working out with our partners, but it's also the, our partners and the sponsors and the members having trustful collaboration between one another and helping each other to succeed. And that's pretty much it. Um, so thank you for your attention. And I trust that now you, I, I have been transparent with you all with where we are and where we're going. And um, yeah, it's gonna be an exciting 2022 to say the least. Um, as long as someone can end this virus, uh, it'd be much appreciated. But um, to, I wanna also send a message out to the other event organizers out there. And look, this is the, I mean, since the pandemic has started, it's been a tough time. Been very, there's been a lot of tricky situation, but um, I think the most important thing is, is really, if you wanna succeed in this game um, that we're in in the events world, especially in the semiconductor industry, it's important to really listen to what the attendees and what the members are saying. And it's not also listening, it's also acting upon what you're listening on. And I think this is what's needed. You know, these are very, very tough times. And, you know, one has to kind of wiggle their way out of certain issues. But um, looking uh, back when this pandemic and it becomes an endemic, I think many around the globe and in our industry will have sincere gratitude and appreciation for the work that we do to help the industry as a whole, to bond, to communicate, to strengthen, to inspire, to connect and to collaborate. I wish you all the best for 2022 and take care and may we cross path in due course. Bye for now.